Go. Okay, we're calling our meeting to order at uh, 6.08 on Monday the 14th. Uh, properly, we should be asking about changes to the agenda, but I think maybe we should save that until mm -hmm. the more open meeting begins. Right, and the warrants are circulating. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I would make an, a motion that the board enter executive session under 1 BSA section 313A3 relating to the appointment or employment of a public officer or employee and invite a candidate to join us. Second. Second. Thank you, Rick. Questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, aye. so we will enter executive session, um, step out and invite our candidate to join us, and Wayne will let you know when we are ready for you to rejoin. Or, Wayne, are you ready for us? Okay. We were in executive session, as you know. Thank you for your patience and um, my apologies that we don't have a warming hut outside when that happens. We went into executive session um, under 1 BSA 313A3, uh, which relates to appointment and employment of a public officer employee. We had a candidate who came in with us. Um, and we interviewed, and at this time I am ready for a motion to take action consistent with our discussion in executive session. So moved. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay. Lisa, let's say take that. Take action consistent with the executive session. Consistent with discussion in executive session. So that, again, is, that's that middle ground of we are going to take an action um, but it is not something we can specifically disclose given the nature of the action, um, which is different than we have nothing to report. <laughs> we have something to report, and uh, stay tuned. Uh, okay. We thank you all for being here, and we are continuing to try to figure out how to do uh, public comment in a way that both allows people to speak and allows us to get our work done. Um, so thank you for signing in. If you'd like to speak, we're going to turn to executive session, or not executive session, sorry, to um, our public comment at 7.30. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, we have, um, let me ask whether there are any additions or changes to the agenda that people want to the board, that the board wants to make. No. No. Anybody? No. Okay. No. Um, Sharon. Yes. So Mark made a motion and then was it seconded? And yeah, Rick seconded. seconded. Okay. Or Denise. Denise. Yeah. Okay. Everybody's okay. hands went okay. up. <laughs> and we voted unanimously. Okay. Yeah, and, and we all, and we voted. Okay. Uh, we did vote, didn't we? Yeah. We did. Okay, I've moved on already. Um, okay. No changes to the agenda. The warrants are circulating for signature. Um, moving on to the consent agenda, I am going to ask that we remove the minutes because of October 20th. Um, all, 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 all of them because I think not everybody's had a chance to take a look at them. Okay. That leaves uh, three items mm -hmm. on the consent agenda. So I would move the additional items listed on the consent agenda. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 So what we so what those items are, if you didn't print a copy of the agenda, is we have basically swapped Candy Smith from a DRB alternate into a full DRB member, and Ashley Moore from a full member to an alternate. Uh, okay, that was at the request of the DRB team. Okay, we have uh, Denise personnel updates. Yes, yeah. first off, Lisa. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm sorry you're not going to be able to continue, but we really appreciated you. You're Thank wonderful. You. you take great minutes. Um, if let us know if something changes. Thanks. Well, the nights are hard and it's late, and I have a long commute. Because... I know. I know. I I actually thought a, a while ago that I wouldn't be surprised, yeah. considering you have to drive to Hardwick. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so. Home and my dogs aren't ready for bed. So anyway. Yeah, I know about that piece. Yes. 
And just keep posting on Facebook pictures of the dogs. <laughs> so uh, Lisa let us know that this is her last night taking uh, so, notes for us. Thank you, Lisa. And there's a little something there for you. That's for you, Lisa. Thank you. Okay, the rest of my update is that we, um, as you know, we interviewed somebody tonight. We had two more emails of interest, but they didn't send resumes. And Denise, do you mind speaking up just a little bit? Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, we had two more emails um, of interest, but they didn't send resumes. And we had one additional applicant, but that person has not responded to emails or phone calls. I'm sorry, for what position? The treasurer. Treasurer, okay, business I'm sorry, manager. I'm just, okay, yeah. no problem. Yeah, no, that's Thank okay. You. Yep. Uh, um, and can I add, maybe you have, we had a person who we had interviewed, but. Oh, that's right. You want to, yeah. yeah, we had somebody that we interviewed a while ago, and that person um, withdrew. He's been, look, he'd been looking for a place to live in the central Vermont area for like six months and could not find anything affordable so decided to withdraw and stay living where he's currently living. So, and he was very good. So the other piece is um, we have here, and I'm sorry it's in such teeny tiny print, but everybody has offered to help. So here is a list of positions that are currently open. Um, so we'll send this around. You might need your magnifying glass to read them, but what, do you want to just read them down through them? Yeah, okay. So what we have open is, you saw the, um, you, <laughs> thanks, sir. you saw the posting for animal control officers, uh, I mean constables. We have animal control open, um, emergency management, well that one's that, not for sure. We need another webmaster, we need a weigher of coal, an assistant zoning administrator, and David, is Jared Thomas still on as CB Fiber? Yes. He is. Okay, that was one of the questions. We need um, planning commission members. We need a design advisory board member. We have three slots open for conservation commission, and they are generally looking for somebody with some background in that area. We also have. Um, three positions open on the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, we are gonna be re-upping our Roads Committee, looking for people to be <coughs> on the Roads Committee again. And that's about it. There's some positions that are gonna come open when we do um, the March meeting, because those are elected. So that would be, a, um, we understand there's a lister that's not going to um, want to run again. And that's pretty much it, but I can send this around so you can sign up for whatever position you would like to help us with. <laughs> the price of coming to a meeting. No, no, it's actually no, it's really helpful. At, yeah, at, la at our last meeting, Mary Alice, Mary Alice Prophet said if, that we should ask for help, and we realize we don't, we don't ask for help at every meeting, so we are. That's an area for help. This will be a regular feature of our meeting. So here's the help we need. Um, sign up and we'll and, and, or, make it and, happen. And also spread the word. Yes, yeah. spread the we word. We really, it's, this is a perennial problem in small towns. You know, there's just not yeah, enough. Yeah, we're not the of, only small Not enough of us. Yeah, right. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did, I, you know, I did, one thing that was mentioned was the possibility of like a public information officer. You know, at the last meeting, we, we, yeah. could, we would, well, we haven't really talked about this yeah, yet yeah. as a board, but it would be something worth looking into because it, it's, it takes a lot of time that we don't really have to do that kind of outreach. So if we actually had somebody outside mm -hmm. in the community it's kind of serving that, it would give the double advantage too of having somebody observing that exit isn't in this select board circle. So that that's something to think about. You can find a good spot. Yeah, that's not on the list. It's that's not, not on the list. And we have not, we have and we haven't it, discussed it or established that position. It's just something that's out there. Out there. Yeah. So the rest of my update is just sort of what I've been up to. Um, we we've signed off on the FEMA COVID grant. Um, I've renewed the VLCT passive 2023 insurance. That's done. 
VLCT management, VLCT risk management assessment. Um, that's been taken care of. There, I've been at the town garage reviewing emails and talking with the crew. I spent about four hours there last week, maybe the week after. There's literally thousands of emails that have to be gone through, some deleted, some printed off with hard copies for stuff that are grants that should be in the town office, organizing the emails, creating file, creating email folders so you can find things. Um, These are historic emails. Historic emails, yeah. right. Um, I've been working with Rick to create grant files and I renewed the diesel, what is it called? Diesel, diesel tax, tax exemption, which happens like every two years. And you used to be able to do it on paper. Now they have to have it so you set up an account online. So I've set up an account online and done passwords. Got it all set up so it's all ready to go. Um, my next up stuff to do is to inventory the road crew pagers and see we need to get another pager. Two-way radio for the tractor, but we don't need that till summer. Um, worked on getting bonus the first and second installment of road crew bonuses. That's happen, happened. Um, the road crew is reviewing, and this is probably in your notes too, reviewing the road crew plow, plowing routes. Because when I was in the garage, and I have mentioned this to Rick, that the former road commissioner's route was three hours long, and everybody else's route was six hours long. So they're working on trying to make it more even, the plow routes. Um, Rick and I are having um, a meeting on Zoom with this, it's called Brick tomorrow. It's for Brick Grant. It's for a Brick Grant. It's tomorrow at 11, Rick. Yeah. So you know. Yep. I'm and then there. Rick and I are going to work on reviewing this Vision, Vision SARS grant administration for FY23. These are grant compliance documents that we have to meet. Basically, the grants that we have, it's Right. audit requirements, things like that. And then Rick and I have been working with um, Nick and Betty Copeland on a grant for generators for the town hall and Maple Corner Community Center for emergency management. <coughs> and just so you know, I've been doing payroll since eight, April of 2022. So that's where I'm at. Thank you. It's my update. I, am, I want to add one item, and that is that our, uh, I, we learned, we got the final piece of leading up to a potential uh, union negotiation with our road crew. They, the Labor Relations Board had certified the vote, which means we now move into starting to schedule conversations with them and all, all the next steps. Um, right, that we've been through before. Which we, which we have been through before couple of years ago yeah um, and we will be Denise mentioned earlier but with Lisa's exit we will be we can add minutes recording secretary record is on there is it on there okay great I think it's on there but we need a recording secretary person to do our minutes yep because if, if one of us has to do them they're not going to be as detailed as Lisa's um, okay. We are at, I'm just paying attention to the time. We're ahead of time. We're, we're ahead of time. We're ahead Good. of time. That's great. Um, I don't know if everybody's here. Well, everybody was supposed to be here by 7. Yeah, we, this is why we, partly why we well, asked folks to think. be here at 7. So I'm going to assume that people who want to speak are here. So, uh, so what we're going to do is each person will have five minutes. And if every single person who is here expressed interest and it takes us longer than the half hour that we left on the agenda, then we'll give that time. Um, and if we have to continue our meeting to finish our business to another night, that's, that's what we'll do. We really struggle with, to try to figure out how to get our business done and um, invite people to speak. So that's, that's what we landed on. So, Thank you for being here at seven. Um, I'm assuming that I know you you yep. um, mentioned. Okay, so um, we have 
six books, that's actually a perfect half hour. Yeah, although, um, but is there anybody good. you wanted to speak who didn't get to sign in? A good question. That's a fair question. Okay. Okay, great. Um, all right, I'm just going to go in the order that you guys are listed here, if that's okay. Uh, David, you're first. Please come and join us. And don't take offense, but I am, for your benefit and mine, I'm just going to go ahead and set this. And when it, when it, when it, when it, when it dings, that's your cue to, to find your graceful wrap-up. I want to say your name. So, David Healy on 770 Robinson Cemetery Road. And I'm here to talk about suggestions and thoughts for select board consideration. And the first topic I'm going to address is town management. Maybe time for creating a town administrator or manager position. The management and operations of the town have gotten more complex over the last 10 or more years. This person would be responsible for providing drafting budgets, drafting board agendas, managing staff recruitment, etc. Before going in that direction, the board may want to seek out help for moving in that direction. And I've provided a link to the Vermont Town and City Management Association for that kind of a reference. That's number one. Number two, dealing with surprises. And this is already a subject that you've just discussed. A monthly town newsletter would provide all residents with information about what's going on. It would also provide an opportunity to profile various members of town staff and commissions. There may be volunteers who would be willing to take this on. I bring that up because East Montpelier has one, Waterbury has one, Middlesex has one, Callus does not have one. Is that the signpost? Yes. Yeah. So I just think that you know, a lot of things we don't, everybody knows, some knows some things, but not everybody knows everything. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, online meetings. What base meetings allow for a lot more public engagement? Outfitting the town hall to better accommodate this is critical. The board could use some of the town's out of funds to purchase the appropriate equipment, audio, video equipment, camera that moves towards <coughs> talking, and acoustic treatment if necessary. Meeting efficiency improvement. One way of improving the efficiency of the board meetings is to have whomever oversees an area in which a motion is to create the motion, oh, the person should create the motion in writing prior to the meeting. And this serves two purposes. One, everybody knows what it is, and it goes to the minute taker exactly as, as crafted. This is the standard practice at the CB5 board and all our committee meetings. Our meetings seem to be incredibly productive with this approach. Um, dealing with contentious issues. The board should develop a protocol for dealing with contentious issues before they get out of hand. This could be providing the pros and cons of the issues in advance. Um, town office access. I believe it's important that the town office be more generally open and available to visit. And then uh, lastly, oversight function. The board should establish a process for reviewing planning commission, conservation commission, and development review board activities at, 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 uh, and others. More engagement with these volunteer bodies can help avoid contra controversial surprises within the community. And those are my Did you give, uh, do you have copies for us? I have copies oh, for Oh, okay, good, because I was taking notes. <laughs> no, 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 no. I have one for the Thank you. David, thank you so much. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Can I say with the part? Absolutely. Nice to have you. A model. Thank you, David. There's extras if anybody wants David's written comments. I'll just take this. David, do you want some more copies to yeah. get to people? Okay, all right. Who's next? Dot Helen. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. My name is Scott Helling. I live on Haggett Road in Adamant. Um, I'm a retired lawyer. I serve on the DRB in the town of Callis, and I work at the Adamant Co-op. And <clears throat> I may be a little out of time here, but because it sounds like there may have been a truce, but I'm here to talk about what's been going on controversially between the select board and the residents. Um, and just for full disclosure, Sharon is a friend of mine. We walk together. Rick, John, some other folks here in the audience are friendly acquaintances of mine, people I really like. Um, and I read Front Porch Forum 
Um, I've been really appalled by the accusations. I'm using my notes so I don't go over five minutes because I <laughs> ramble on about this forever. That's because that's why you're a lawyer. Um, and the attacks against select board members who've been trying to do a good job for all of us. I was particularly appalled when those remarks, some of which were not based in fact, included things like an allegation that somehow the board edited the orchid transcript or the insinuation that you folks were having secret meetings. Um, I just can't fathom that members of this select board whom I know would be so underhanded. Um, you seem to have gone out of your way to be transparent and offer everyone a chance to criticize and ask questions. Uh, trying to assuage the critics has undermined your ability to get on with the business of other items that are important to our town. These folks, the select board, is here to serve us. They spend long hours in meetings, they review documents, they chew over issues, and it's all without pay. If I had been a member of this board for the past several months, I would have stepped down. Instead, they're offering us more time. I don't know, I'm thinking some of the critics are out there tonight. Um, <clears throat> I really regret that few, if any, of our citizens have spoken up on the board's behalf. It appears most, if not all, of the voices have been the critics. And I'm wondering why those of you who support the process and support our select board members have not spoken out. There are always two sides to every story, and both should be heard. I understand tonight is aimed in part, at least I thought in part, to address the maligning commentary of the past weeks and to try and set these differences aside and move on. I ask all of you to say what you have to say now or, as they say, forever hold your peace. And I say this not just to the critics, but also to those of you who are in support, in whole or in part, of the select board, its conduct, and its actions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Doc. <laughs> also, admirably, within five minutes. Thank you. Everybody's been doing great. Thank you. Within the time. Uh, Barbara. Barbara Whedon is next. You're not next? She doesn't want to talk. Are you? Okay. Well, unfortunately, <coughs> excuse me, I have a frog in my throat tonight. Um, I signed our win. I thought that was a list of attendees. Oh, okay. Okay. As okay. speakers. Okay, okay. Or no fair, problem. Probably would have put myself further down the list. <laughs> Jenny, are you an attendee or a speaker or both? I, both. Okay, feel free to come up and join us, please. So, yes, thank you. <clears throat> Um, so I want to say I think ongoing criticism is part of the democratic process and, and should be encouraged and I do feel you have encouraged that and I think that's great and I think it should continue. Um, uh, and I also think that yes, of course, there's at least two sides to every story, right? I mean, there's probably really many, many sides to the story and that is really what I want to speak to tonight. It seems like um, there is, there's just some communications breakdowns, some relationship breakdowns, and that it, there seems to be a pattern of this. So it's not, it's not what's happened between the select board and the road commission. It's not what's happened between the select board and Jeremy and Barbara. It's, it's all town employees, previous town clerks, future town clerks. It feels like there is something systemic which is just not working. And it may be that David captured it very admirably in talking about how the roles have gotten bigger and bigger and harder and harder to manage. So what I would like to suggest is maybe um, reaching out to some kind of organizational consultant or an organizational mediator facilitator kind of consultant to really kind of get to the heart of what has been causing these difficulties and challenges and try to come up with a solution that best pleases everybody. Because I think that we do all, we all, we all love campus, we love living here, we all want to have a smoothly functioning governmental system within our town and uh, 
So I think some kind of mediation protocol has called for some kind of consultant to to work with everybody and figure out what what is really the best solution for all. Thank you. I think I'm within my like five minutes. Just Absolutely. Yes. yes. Well done. Uh, Reed, Reach Harrington. It's on the calendar. Yeah, it's on the well, it's, it's a picture of the month. Right, and if you click on the the link on the date, it oh. take, it takes you to the agenda. Okay. Well, I, Sorry, I, I knew. I'm supposed I to let you talk. I'm sorry. I knew that if I front that up, I'd end up feeling <laughs> stupid. No, 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 no. It's a good it's a good point. I don't know how yeah. other people might be having um, similar issues. One of the things that's bugged me about the agenda, the agendas, <laughs> is. Um, that there are a number of what I see as sort of obscure items on the agenda, and I don't know what they are. Um, it, it, it'll, be, it'll be about something I've never heard of and don't even know what it is, and including words that I don't even um, know the meaning of. Um, so if, if there's some way that, even if the agenda becomes a two-pager, um, it's three. Go on. It's already three? Yeah, no, but go oh, on. No, go on. If there's some way that uh, there could be some explanation by each item that is clearly going to um, confuse people because they, they don't have the intimate knowledge that, that the select board member has of the, of the issue. Mm -hmm. um, so some interpretation. And the thing that bugs me the most is um, um, the use of acronyms. Uh, and now, they, acronyms are perfectly fine if what they refer to is fully spelled out on the same page. So your eyes can just go back and see, mm -hmm. oh, that's what that is. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's if it's not, it should be just spelled out. Even I don't know, it takes more paper. But um, I just can see the average. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, um, Susan and Callis looking at those things and saying, "What's this all about? I don't, I don't want to know." Mm -hmm. you know? And and that's not what we want. That's not what we want to elicit from the public. So, um, let me. I'm just checking here to make sure that I covered what I wanted to cover. Um, Thank you. Thank, thank, you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for, for the yeah, concrete suggestions. Well, one of the that's things right. that, um, Judy, you're next. Um, we've, I mean, I think, I hope you've all noticed, we've, we've you know, we try to bring more. We've, we've started saying when we're going to take an actual action rather than just, you know, discuss something. But marrying your comment up, Reed, with I think it was from David. I heard this is only speaking for me because everybody in the board needs to buy into this. But I think it would be great if we did actually where we're going to take an action, if we literally put the motion on the agenda, at least the proposed motion. We could always amend it. I was going to say sometimes we don't know. Sometimes, but but it would force it. us to, you know. Somebody knows what they would love the emotion to be. Right. Mm -hmm. And that could go on the agenda. And we could all 
pick it apart and say we hate that motion. Yeah. But anyway. Um, thank you. Thank you. I had somebody else that asked us not to use acronyms. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. something. That's, that's a important. that's a that's, very that's, easy that's address. An easy, that's an easy fix. That's an easy fix. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Let me get back here to my. Okay, Judy, welcome. Thank you. Judy Fitch Robert um, at the Kent Hill Road. And I'm actually, um, first I want to thank you so much for having this extended public comment time um, so that you can hear the ideas and opinions and concerns of the Catalyst community. I really appreciate you providing that. Um, I'd like to first make my own statement, and I'm going to read it, and I'll I'll supply it to the recording secretary so she'll have the, the text. And then I'm also going to read a letter from Donna Fitch. She couldn't be here. I know she emailed it to you, mm -hmm. but um, she also emailed it to others and there was a consensus that it would be helpful to read it out loud so it could be shared with the community. So I'm going to read that aloud too. Um, and I don't think it'll go over five minutes, but I, I might make up some of the other time that was not taken. Um, <coughs> And I am going to read it just so I don't wander and lose track here. Um, this is yours to start. So I'm going to start with mine. No, just say, I want to thank each of you for your time, energy, skills, and everything that you give to the town in these unpaid positions that require juggling the management of multiple areas and solving a multitude of problems. We owe you incredible gratitude, and I appreciate the impossible positions that you have, you must feel at times that they are impossible because the demands are so great. And I want to start with that in a sense of generosity <coughs> and support. I agree uh, with Doc that, that you've been maligned unfairly online. Um, and, you know, I've, I have some suggestions that I want to put forward to support you. And also I speak for myself from my experience. Um, while I believe each individual member of the select board is working hard and has the town's best interest at heart, my observations in my 10 years as a town official, I was assistant town clerk then, and assistant treasurer and then town clerk, lead me to believe that the select board needs to develop more effective patterns of communication, particularly regarding employee relations. I've witnessed a number of, of employees and some town officials leave their positions stating that they felt unheard, disrespected and discouraged in their relationship with the select board. And like Jenny said, I think it's not in, in any, if, I'm not sure it's an individual issue, it's almost a systemic issue, issue like what David said. Um, here's a few suggestions. In order to move forward in good faith, I suggest the select board, one, hold frequent and regular listening sessions with employees, officials, and the public. Two, develop a strong professional system, consistent system, which can't involve just you because it's overwhelming, um, for hiring, training, supervising, evaluating, and engaging with employees and appointed officials. Three, develop job descriptions in collaboration with the people in town who have direct experience and skills and knowledge and understand the scope of the work in those positions. And four, provide overviews and updates on from porch forum that explain the major direction and priorities of the select board beyond the agenda and minutes uh, to increase transparent a sense of transparency and trust and that might get back to the newsletter idea which again i'm sure you don't have time to do but i think it gets lost in the agenda and minutes like what's the main thrust what's your what's your vision what's your direction and then people start you know kind of like what's going on so those are my suggestions. I'm going to now turn to um, Don. And you're going to give that to I'll give that to her. And I'll also, I'll, I'll also email, email it so there's a word it? document. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, so this is from Donna. So it's, it, this is not necessarily directly my ideas, although I agree, I agree with many of them. Um, <clears throat> Donna writes, I will be out of town for two weeks and won't be able to attend the November 14th select board meeting, but wanted to speak out to the current personnel issues. I hope my past work experience in business settings and as town clerk and treasurer can offer some insight. My observation is that the new positions, director of public, public works and treasurer slash business manager have been created in response to issues that festered over several years and were not addressed at the time. 
the select board was reluctant or unable to address the strained relationship between the board and the road commissioner. The operations manager position, which, which in its original iteration was temporary, was intended to be evaluated after a few months. It was not. A part-time select board administrative position created by a select board appointed committee in 2017 was in the end not approved. Rather than looking back, the select board and citizens need to look forward. I'd like to see us do this together. And she has six suggestions, which I'll read out briefly. One, the treasurer business manager job description is unrealistic. I doubt if there's a person out there who could fulfill the requirements or whose experience covers or who would want to take on accounting, human resources, and a high level administrative support position. Two, is the treasurer position part-time, defined part-time, so it is clear how many hours the job is expected to take and clearly lay out the expectations of that position that go beyond day-to-day -day bookkeeping tasks and payroll. Three, high-level administrative support to the select board and the town is desperately needed. Many of these expectations are spelled out in the treasurer slash business manager job. The person for this job is not a treasurer. The previously mentioned select board administrator job description also addressed the organizational and managerial skills needed. Four, the personnel issues go beyond these two new positions. Over the years, more responsibilities and requirements have been passed down from the state to the towns. Specific skills and expertise are needed. I am concerned about the aging population of those who serve on the town commissions and committees. I'm exposed to the work of the planning commission, the zoning administrator, and the listers. These are professional positions requiring specific expertise. We need to be reaching out and mentoring younger Cal citizens so that the current committee members can share their knowledge. And that includes mentoring future select board members. Five, the select board cannot work in a vacuum, nor do five people necessarily have the skills and experience needed to run the town. The post-pandemic employment situation is a challenge. However, there is a lot of talent and experience in Calus, and there are people who want to help. <coughs> Six, none of this will happen unless we work together to engender respect and rapport between the select board, town employees, committee and commission members, and Calus citizens. Thank you very much. And I'll make sure that Lisa gets these. Yeah, thank you, Judy. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Judy. Mm -hmm. Does anybody know how East Montpelier's signpost newsletter, it, it's always been my impression that that's entirely private. It's, it's private. It's right? volunteer for, I think the town supplies the printing, material, yeah, the cost. Okay. And that's, okay. A hard, and that's a hard copy document. Right? Both. Yeah. I think it might it's be online both. as well. So, so if, if you'll indulge us in, in just some. And do we have anybody else on the list? Uh, no, that's it. Oh, okay. Uh, Is there, is there yeah, someone who else who would like to talk who hasn't? Okay. So, so um, I, you know, this is good. We have a little bit of time. Um, I was curious how that happens. Um, the so one of the things that I wanted to say out loud is we. Um, I'm going to speak from my heart and my experience. One of the, so many things we struggle with, one is email. And I've, you guys have heard me say that before. Um, my personal feeling is that we will be so much healthier if people come to our meetings and say, here's something I want to talk about. And then we create space on an agenda to do it. Because a lot happens in email that is a formula for it feeling um, like it's a surprise when it shows up on an agenda, to Reed's point, for getting lost in the shuffle and not showing up in the queue. Um, and any, you know, any, other, any number of other things. But I, I would love to have people come and say, we have an idea. Will you just kind of, well, we have some of those things going on now. The, right. the, 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 the um, Curtis Pond Dam is, um, really 
started as, at least in my iteration, I joined the board in 2017. And I think the committee, by the way, that you, that you mentioned that worked on that job was before 2017, because it wasn't when I was here. But that's neither here nor there. Anyway, this idea that so much excellent work can happen outside of the board and just kind of check in with the board, like a newsletter. If there's a group of citizens who want to do a newsletter in town, um, and what we, what the group needs from us is, we love that idea. Can we build some money into the budget to support it? Absolutely. Um, would you, you know? Would we each make ourselves available uh, to you know have a conversation or be interviewed? I don't know why not. It will be up to each person. Um, so those kinds of things can happen anytime somebody wants to come and say, I'm willing to take ownership of this. Will you just bless it for me? Um, yeah, and, yeah, and it's like, what do you, what do you need? What do you, what need? do you need from the board to make this happen? Yeah. Because um, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of talent out there. Mm -hmm. um, I love the newsletter idea. I think that could be something that, you know, let's get some people involved that are willing to, to work on that. Mm -hmm. And I like the idea of putting a link. I mean, we could put a link on the agenda that takes you to the agenda, but maybe just mm -hmm. making it clear in a newsletter. You know, if you go to the town website, the calendar is on the front page, and it lists all the meetings right on the calendar, mm -hmm. but maybe people don't really understand that they can click on that. Yeah. On it's that. Not it's on that link, link that I can't and, it, yeah. and it takes you to the agenda. So you know, there's some things like that that you know it could be something in the newsletter. Hey, did you know? Mm -hmm. I, I, I like think this. I, I do. I like the idea of something. I don't know how we would do it. Something very brief coming from the town. I know. I don't know how it gets there, but I know on the website of Plainfield. It might be Marshfield, I don't know which, I'd have to look. When you go to the main page of the website, there's sort of like, here's what's going on right now. Yeah. It's right there. It's only a page, you know, but it's sort of like, here are the main events. This item is coming up to be discussed at the select board. This item, you know, and I, I know we're overextended, but I, at any rate, I, I really thank you. One of the things I'm really, struck by is the concreteness of your proposals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just think they're it's really much, great. It's much, more, it's much more helpful yeah. to yeah. have ideas. You know, and we can't fix all the problems. So, you know, ideas are really, really helpful and appreciated. Mm -hmm. I, I and really, gets, and gets my brain to thinking. Well, and I will say, it again, for speaking only from, I really worry about overpromising. I worry about things that we say we'll do and then we can't do. I worry about these guys, uh, I worry about, I, I, would, I would be against us putting more on Front Porch Forum because I, I worry that creates another forum for conversation when really our meetings need to happen here, our conversation needs to happen here. Um, because then we're conducting town business. Right now I worry we're doing too much town business actually in email rather than here. Uh, we certainly don't want to be doing town business on Front Porch Forum because somebody from the select board has weighed in on something. That's, that's actually counterproductive to um, the open meeting law where our meetings happen here. Um, and, and plus, we would get busy. This happens all the time. We would get busy with something and we wouldn't keep up some commitment somebody thought we'd made and then there's a whole other problem to right. solve. And you know, Front Porch, Forum, your hand Front Porch Forum is social media and we know mm -hmm. what happens with social media. That's why you have not seen a select board member respond to the comments because we can't. Well, we don't, yeah. That's, that's our practice. We all agreed that we would not respond to comments on Front Porch Forum. For one thing, mm -hmm. if we were going to comment as a board, we'd have to have a meeting to agree to comment. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So, right. It, and like for one of us to comment, it, it's just not, it's just not the, it's, it's not the way it should be. We should be doing our business here. If you have an issue, please come talk to us. Mm -hmm. and we try to speak through the chair, you know, with one voice just for that reason. We have to be very careful about how we as individuals reach out. Well, I don't so necessarily agree with that. No, we don't. Well, we don't. We don't. No, we don't. <laughs> well, I we, don't we do not speak through the chair. Okay, we all well, have a voice. I, that's always been my approach. But my point is that the point that really matters is that we don't 
as individuals on a platform like that. We aren't speaking for the other board members, but that's the way that can be interpreted mm -hmm. in those forms. So we're very careful about not doing mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. because, yeah, we're all independently elected, but I do not, you know, I don't represent Sharon. You know, we have to speak as a unified voice. We like to do that in a form where we're together. Mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. if we want to disagree, we can disagree here. Mm -hmm. um, did somebody have a Jenny. Yeah, yeah I mean, Jenny. yeah, qu quick, I'm going to just peek. This clock isn't working, which is why yeah, I'm going to peek. quarter of. Quarter of. So, um, Reed had his hand up. Ginny, I saw yours. Reed, do you have a quick question? Yeah, or? just, uh, I just, uh, when we're on the subject of communications with the public, um, uh, I wonder if we, if we know how many people in town don't use computers and don't have mm -hmm. um, that right. kind of mm -hmm. uh, right. We that, don't know. It, it, I don't know if we fix how we can fix it. Right. David probably I, knows. I feel more comfortable about our almost obsessive use of, ele of, of electronic communication. Mm -hmm. If I knew, uh, if, if, if we weren't missing so many people um, right. because mm -hmm. they don't use computers. That, mm -hmm. I, I, I agree. I mean, I would. Yeah. I'm very intrigued by, uh, you know, what if we took a community? What if we took a electronic hiatus? And we went back to <laughs> come here. The sunspot. Yeah. The big, the big sunspot. I'm very intrigued by that. By I mean, we. I. It, it would be. It would be an interesting um, exercise. But our work still does happen here. Um, we don't make any decisions on email. Mm -mm. We don't. We, we really don't. don't. Because you can only take you can only take our word for it. But violation of the I public think, records law, an you, open meeting law. I yeah. do think, David. I mean, I do think. I brought it up here. I think there's a strong sentiment on the board. Certainly, I have it that our meetings should be all available on Zoom. The problem is we're making, it's just ridiculous here, and under our current. And so when we get broadband in here, I mean, I think you'll find a lot of support for doing. You're going to need better equipment. Yeah, 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 we know right. that. Better equipment. But we can't, the, the signal is so unstable. Know, it's, it's so, right, so, yeah. so we have, you know, that has been brought up and discussed because we were doing mm -hmm. Zoom meetings when it was COVID, but it was everybody was on Zoom. Doing the hybrids. It's it proved to be a really it did huge challenge. We did need work well. equipment to do that. Yeah, and, and the acoustics. The acoustics here are a problem. I mean, I'll look, so for acoustics, but there's more to it than that. So when we were meeting in hybrid, that screen was like where all the Zoom land folks were. Mm -hmm. And I always sat over there, and the little owl guy camera was in the middle. So this is what it was like. If I wanted to look at faces and see everybody. Those of you who are in Zoom, you know exactly what happened. Turn my back to the owl. So what you're literally seeing is my back now so that I can see your faces. <laughs> and that was, that didn't work for me. When I'm, I want to speak and I want to like talk to somebody and, or the, and my back is to the. Right, and the acoustics in here are not great, as yeah. we know. We have to get hanging. We have to get so in the window for yeah. Right, right. But, I just want to say one of the other reasons for doing it is there are many of us that are saying don't drive at night because of headlights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. it's like we can't vote. Yeah. So um, I want to, I'm, Jeannie, I, I, yes, I want to just, one thing I hope we can package a little bit is this idea of a newsletter or a different kind of communication. And I wanted to say to those of you who are here um, and interested in that, bring us back a proposal and tell us what you need from us in terms of of a budget item you know we need you to we're gonna this is how it's gonna work somebody's gonna come to your meeting somebody you know um well we need a newsletter committee a newsletter committee bring yeah bring back bring back the proposal the more this is what i say to one of my neighbors one of my neighbors is full of ideas full of ideas <laughs> and i say to my neighbor i will i will come over and you're kitchen table and help you develop your proposal, but every time I hear, why don't you just, I go, <laughs> you just, you're giving me more things and I already got all the things 
I can handle. But we will support you if, with a, with a well-thought-out proposal that you can do. I'm thinking about Linda Sheets with, right, well, the, with, with the, the swim ramp. Right, yeah, um, the sheets came to us and, and we said, Linda, will you make it happen? And she said, yes. Yeah, it's like, okay, do the, Good. Do the light yeah. work, check it out, yeah. and report back to us. That's really, really helpful, and that means community involvement. Yeah. If you, if you do that, you know, don't just come and say that you don't like this and you don't like that and not have any way to help us, because I can't think of all of the ways to make things different or better. And then actually, pro and then, then, then over-promising. I, I never like to say I'll do that and then not do it. And so instead I don't say I will do it, and because I know if I did, I would just disappoint. Jenny, you've waited very patiently. <laughs> I, I'm sort of taking the opposite approach from Reed in that, yes, there may be many people who in town who don't have computers, don't like doing social media, but you're talking about getting younger people involved and moving younger people on board. <coughs> gotta gotta use social media. Gotta reach out, and I I feel like it might be better to do more rather than less. So I hear what you're saying. You can't say anything. <coughs> Decisive, <clears throat> but you know, if, if if there was, for example, a town Facebook page, it could go right up there. Like, oh, we want to have a newsletter committee. Who wants to be part of a newsletter committee? Um, so, I'm not I'm not necessarily saying yes, you should do a Facebook page. I'm just saying, there don't sort of shut down the idea of social yeah. media. I know because that reaches a whole another. There is, we, something did come up now that you mentioned about a Facebook page. If it's a Facebook page that is done by the town, like the select board or the office staff or anybody like that, there are certain regulations you have to follow to keep it up. So like different people have done, like there's a callous, callous people page that somebody started. And callous settlers. And callous settlers. Those are individual citizens doing that. If we did it as the select board, there's a lot of regulations that we have to follow to make it so that it's kept up to date. And there, I, it did come up, Jenny, so just so you know, it has come up, and I appreciate you bringing it up. But just know that there's a lot of baggage that goes with it. If you want to start one, go ahead. Hi. I feel like Sharon. <laughs> well, but I'm thinking these thoughts. Uh, but the other thing is, coming to meetings isn't that easy to do, especially as the snow sets in. You know, I mean, I agree. I, I mean, that's one of the things I, I honor about you all the most is getting here for these meetings. And now we and, have to warm up the car ahead of time. And uh, so I'm wondering if there's a way, uh, like a public reach out, that you could have just like talk sessions. Of meeting sessions like at the Maple Corner Community Center and at Adamant, but you know, just I know something else on your plate. But another way to help increase communications between the select board and the public. So, 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 what, so like public outreach meetings in various parts of the town, like, yeah, that's like living room, like living room meeting. You, the only way we could do it is if it wasn't, we'd have to warn it. As a board meeting, if it involved all of us, if right. it's just a couple of us, it doesn't have to get warned. Well, we another, could rotate our meetings. We could move our meetings to other places. We did right. that for a while. We did them We're, in East, okay. East Callis for a while. All right, let me ask this. Would somebody be willing to explore other venues and, and bring back a suggestion for occasionally doing our this meeting just in a different place in town? Maple Corner Community Center. Would somebody like to take that on There's and come back? There's the Community Club. There's the East Palace yeah. Rec Center. Would somebody like to take the lead on on putting some shape around that idea? I'm looking for somebody else. <laughs> but I would love somebody else. So well, I think so. the MCCC is a good place to start, yeah. yeah. And this is a question of that place. Just getting, would Monday, would Monday nights do you need it? And make sure the night is reserved. What? To get the maple oh, right. you have to reserve the room. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you got to make sure it's available on right. Monday nights. Yeah. So, right, so somebody would have to be in charge of right. scheduling. Right. Yeah. Um, well, think about it, because yeah. um, 
you know, I, I don't want to commit to the ward to, to things that we can't accomplish when we, when you, we have said we will. We, we honestly feel ourselves this burden of doing too much of that already. We sit here and say to ourselves, oh, we'll do that. And then we look at each other and say, well, what happened? Did we ever get that done? And it is not that we're not getting anything done. It's that there's too many balls floating. Judy. I'm not quite sure how to articulate this, but um, it seems to me that the controversies and conflicts that have created a, a, a sense of lack of transparency or lack of trust emanate from difficulty communicating with employees and other officials. And if that core issue was dealt with, then it's almost like a, a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. If those relationships were positive and strong and healthy and there was structure around that, supervision, evaluation, clarity around you know, job descriptions and just a, a sense of a real strong core leadership and management in terms of employees and, and appointed officials, I feel like the communication problem might even take care of itself because it would kind of be at the center. <coughs> and it's not so much where the venue is because people all from one side of town will want to go to the other side of town. It's dark, it's winter, whatever. I think it's about really core relationship building and trust amongst the board and the board with the people that you supervise. And that creates a whole culture of trust and transparency. And that's to me, where the, the attention needs to go. Okay, that's yeah. really that's, that's helpful. helpful. Thank you, and um, thank you with uh, thank you for that. Um, one kind of wrap up thought is anything we do as a group has to be in public, literally, unless it fits into an exception. So that's something to be aware of as we think about all the, the ideas of what the select board could do. Can I just make one yeah. Other when I was a town clerk, there was a period of time where Denise and Cliff met with the office staff every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And I, it was a period of time where I felt like we were really heard, we really understood what the select board issues were, they heard what our issues were, we began to work on things together. And then there was some kind of a decision that that was inappropriate. And I actually think there's probably a structural, legal way for you to have liaisons with different constituents so that you are not all have to be in the same room with the same person and you can build good relationships. So, so what I'm curious about is, I mean, we, Mark is in the context of your recent campaign, met with some other select boards. I've been to select board meetings in other towns for different reasons. The other town officials come to the meetings and so that's one of my points of curiosity is what happened to the idea that um, part of the organic integration happens because we're meeting every other or twice a month at least in a meeting here and this is where all the town business happens not all but where our business happens um, and having you know Alfred the road commissioner came here I would really I think that that model to me where everybody on the board, not just a couple of point people, because a lot gets lost there. And so that's it feels to me like a little bit of a whack-a-mole, like, wait a minute, <laughs> we've solved one problem, but we've created a different problem. Well, I have a, th I have a, I have a thought, and I'll just throw it out there for right now. I think that we could put on every agenda 10 minutes for the office staff to come and address the board, and if you don't have anything, then you don't have anything. But, but you're always but, welcome. But, but, but have it as an official agenda item at every meeting to have the office staff come and address the board. Um, it could be the listers coming to address the board. It would be any type of mm -hmm. anything like that. This might be a longer conversation because I, I think there's a power dynamic when somebody comes to the board in an official mm -hmm. way. It creates, it's very I different think. coming here and presenting. Even I feel nervous because we're being recorded. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very different to build a relationship where you're in the office, you're casually talking about, hey, we're thinking about, you know, maybe tearing down that wall because it would create more space for the new trigger. It, it, it engenders some kind of creative collaboration that can't happen in a formal kind of way. Mm -hmm. Can I, may I build on what I think I'm hearing Judy say, is that it's not so much about 
conducting business as it is team building. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, I, I took from what Judy was saying when, when for a while, for a couple of years, Denise and Cliff came and met with the town office staff regularly and we shared ideas between Judy and Sandra and myself and Denise and Cliff. We called ourselves a team. And I felt, and we, we loved that team of five of us. And we felt like we really were understood and were invested in what the select board was working on. And we felt like the select board cared about the town office staff. And that went away with no explanation. And we have missed it terribly. And, 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 and the select board has appointed different ones of you to be liaisons, a liaison to the road group, a liaison to the listers, a liaison to the planning commission, a liaison, and we at the town office have asked, oh, asked over and over and over again, would you please have a liaison to the town office? And just to, just to be clear, the liaison to the listers and the planning commission was, re, was for a specific project. For, yes. Specific. It was for a specific project. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I used to enjoy our team meetings. It was great, wasn't yep. it? Yep. Okay. I, yeah, I think I feel like um, this is a Jenny longer one, discussion. Uh, I just, if, it, if it's a wrap-up comment, it just, it, it, to me, this argues further for having an, an outside um, the organizational, organizational consultant. consultant yeah. This isn't something that you can fix right. here on the fly. But I think some deep thought and time needs to go into it to come up with a plan that, again, really works the best for everybody. Right, which would be if it's the whole board in a meeting with a camera on. Well, yeah. Okay. Th no, that's that is we we we've asked and explored the idea of just a workshop, or not a workshop, a retreat, a retreat. A retreat. A retreat. That would, if five members of the select board are at a retreat just for team building, then it's, public. it's a public meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm imagining a consultant could interview each one of you individually, for example, not all together, as well as interview other right. town Right, but if they make recommendation, yeah, maybe yeah. if there's a problem with what's coming. Yeah, it's. I, I think it's a really interesting idea, but I'm just, and I, so I'm not saying no, right. or like all the reasons we can't do it. I'm just informing right. you that it might be considered to be a serial meeting. I don't know, which is illegal, but at any rate, the report they made and the recommendations they made would be public. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would have to be. Yeah. 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 I want to say one thing though, too. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking for myself. Yeah. You know, like I work full time. I meet with the road crew often. You know, John will attest to it now. You know, we try. To, I use vacation time to do that, a lot of it, and it's important to me that those connections. But you know, to keep drawing, we already give huge amounts of our time to this town. I mean, a lot of time, all of us. And so, to keep, you know, I, I and I don't mean to sound selfish, but I keep hearing, "Give me, give me, give me." You got to come to my workplace. Well, that comes out of a little bit of vacation time that I get, and if and takes away from my work, complicates my life at work even more, you know. So we have to, if we do this, I mean, we, I, I have limits to what I can physically do. And just you know, from a wrap up time, I mean, I think this gets back to looking at the structure and a position that could help you with supervision, communication. Um, yeah. That that town administrator where David started maybe. Or the, the committee that had the select board administrator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, thank everybody. You, thank this you. Is, this is, it's nice. Really, this it's is nice to have this chat. Yeah. Thank you. And please stay. And thank yeah. you for, yeah, thank please you for your day and see all the other. You're thank about you to hear a road, road report on the, what the hell was going on with our roads. <laughs> right. Okay. Starting on our yes. budget. Mm -hmm. So just um, that would have been in the minutes of some previous meeting. We were meeting this weekend to start working on the budget. Um, so you know that we, this is very much on our minds as well. Um, also, part of the production that we have to do is produce the warning. Generally, 
uh, warning, so that's the specific things that people vote on. Right. Warning items can come from two places. The select board can, you know, and we will produce a warning for the, um, well, for the overall town budget. But other people come and ask us for warning items. So that's something I want to get really clear about. Because again, this is a place where there's been some email conversation. So if other people say, I want this on the warning, then you could come and ask us to put it on the warning. I think that's a really good process. Here's the kind of rationale. Here's the request. Um, and then you know we can say yes or no. But if you've come in and spoken to us and said, here's what we want you and why. to ask people to vote on and here's why, then, then it's a public process rather than an, some kind of email exchange where it comes up you know, out of nowhere. <laughs> so this is my understanding of it. And all this comes from the big VLCT municipal calendar. It's a great big, huge fold out wall calendar. My understanding is that um, it all comes down to the town clerk. And what happens is that the town clerk will be posting on front porch forum the deadlines that people need to make in order to participate in the warning or to run for office. And so in December is when we start telling people these are the offices that are, when I say we, the town clerk will be letting uh, constituents know these are the offices that are available to run for in, January, in uh, town meeting. Here's the deadline by which you need to file to run for that office. If you want to have a warning, have an article in the warning, this is the deadline by which you need to file your petition, because you have to go out and get 5% of the right. voters to sign the petition and submit it to the town clerk by this deadline. Right. And so right. all of those deadlines fall on the town clerk. That's on that three page right. that I have. So that's my understanding is that it's done by people submitting a petition to that's have right. an article on the warning and it all goes to the town clerk and he brings it to the select board. Mm -hmm. Or the select board can put a warning item on. Of course, of yeah. course you can. Yeah, we can. So because the warning is yours, right. right? And so what I'm saying is, if people have things they want us to put on the warning, us to put on the warning, uh -huh. they come here and tell us about it and why. And they also have to get a petition signed by. No, not not, 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 the, not. No, they don't. Not if oh, the, okay. not if the select board puts it on on our own. Yeah, if it's a, based on somebody coming and saying, we want you know. We want to sell bubble gum at the corner of Peak and Brook. Okay. Whatever. And they do that. They don't have they to don't, get They don't. They don't have. No. Oh, it's okay. only if if the select board's like, well, gee, you know, I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. go get your. Well, and it's, it's, go do your petition and five percent of the voters. Yeah. yeah. But like like the Woodbury Fire Department, they always come here and make their request. Okay. And gotcha. then we put it on. Okay. We're just saying if you, you hear something. Someone yeah. comes or to if you, you have something, or you Barbara. have something, yeah. come to us. Okay. Yeah. And we can we if we put it on, it's on. Woodbury Fire comes mm -hmm. and. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And this is where so I did put something on based on an email thing that was flirting around, um, and to land that email that nobody else was on, but that's that's hard for me to be the only select board on an email, and but also it's it's we don't want everybody on the email because then we're starting to have a meeting. Um, so I did warn, I did put on a future agenda for the town office folks to come and raise an issue that I was threading through that, e that email, you know the one I'm talking about, that there's an issue you would like on the agendas, uh, on the warning. In no, March. there's an issue we would like off. Well, but either way, it, okay. but, but to, to bring some transparency to the okay. issue, that's my point. Okay, so I'll let you take that off of Jeremy. Okay, okay. yeah, all right. All right. Um, all right, so we start on, yeah, so we start our budget process on Monday. Um, Friday. And, Saturday. Saturday, Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. Today's Monday. And, yeah, and we, you know, said out loud that if people want things on the warning that are kind of a, I mean, selling bubblegum on the corner of Peak and Brook, I think we would say go do a petition. Right. But things that's, related, that's my point. Yeah. Things okay. related to okay. town, okay. town business okay. or, you know, something a little more integrated with town business, come here and make sure we're aware. Okay. Okay. So may I ask another process question? Mm -hmm. So in my three-page deadlines for publication of the town report, 
I always uh, I color coded it, and Jeremy was one color, the town clerk was one color, the treasurer was another, the select board was one, the graphic designer was in one, the jet service printing was a different color. Um, what should I do with everything that used to be sand on Sandra's list? Does can that you, now come to the select board? Yeah, can you send that to us? Can you send us the big list? I can send you the big list. Because I'd like to see that. And see. still have it highlighted mm -hmm. as, and I'm just going to call it treasurer. Right. Yeah. It's going to all, right. Right. Because it's gonna, it. because yeah. it's gonna all be the financial right. stuff related. Right, so yeah. it would be helpful for us to okay. answer your question to see that list. Yeah, because yeah. That, okay. those duties are divided, as you know, and we're, but, Give, give them yeah, we don't want to okay. lose the thread that yeah. is the treasure. Right. Okay. Because yeah. we will have a somebody in that role. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. That it? That's Thank it. you, Barbara. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and Barbara, actually, I think I'm calling Jeremy at 825 for the ARPA yeah. item. Uh -huh. Does that sound right to you? Uh, or I'll is call he him. calling you? He asked me for the phone number at the town hall tonight. Oh, okay. I think, I think maybe he's calling in. Yeah, right. Okay. 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 I, yeah, perfect. Um, okay, so we are moving on. To, all right, that kind Rick. of kicks off getting ready for town meeting. Mm -hmm. Is kicked off. Uh, Rick, roads report. Good. I'll try to make it as quick as I can. Uh, in general, I, the, the road crew have been phenomenal again. This since They're October, amazing. we have been uh, we've been really trying to prioritize actions. We've been transitioning from grading to you know to wash repairs and preparing trucks. Or, and so on. We'll get into the details there. We've also been working on the East Montpelier Bridge. John and the guys. Moscow. Pulled, or Moscow, I'm sorry, wrong bridge. <laughs> and uh, the Moscow Bridge, they got a concrete plug into the hole, which will maybe prevent water from dropping down into that failing abutment and making that failure even worse than it is right now. So they that kudos to them and thanks for the weather that we got that allowed us to really pour that concrete without having to eat it mm -hmm. so that's worked out really well um, we've also um, let's see we have managed to we managed to get out and mark locations for several of the of the radar speed signs on Lightning Ridge and on and on County Road so we're going to try to get those plugs in. Right now, we're preparing, obviously, for winter weather. We may be having a storm coming in Wednesday. So they're focused on trucks, and I think they plow frames are on. We've got all of the, uh, all of the dump trucks are operational now. And with the, the six-wheeler just came back. We, did, we had to replace the hydraulic pump on it. I think tomorrow, John, I believe you guys are putting chains on. I, uh, Tyler told me that all the plows were going on to the frames today. Yeah, so they're good. So it's changed tomorrow, so we should be ready. Good job. Yeah, good. If we, all, the, all the equipment's up and running right now, so that's a very good thing. And okay. we're. Well, we're, we've got more to go, don't we? <laughs> so uh, that uh, one thing that has come out that is a big problem the guy showed me the chloride trailer that we haul, the, we have a thousand gallon chloride tank. So you're probably talking the over 10,000 pounds worth of chloride. And that trailer, well, one axle rusted in half and fell off, I believe, right? Had to be, and the trailer is just uninspectable. It's in terrible shape. Should have been retired years ago. So we're kind of coming up with an alternative plan. We'll work on that more this winter after we get into the swing of the, the winter plowing. So that to you know possibly at least for the time being weld up a uh, steel pallet or something so we can lift that empty tank onto one of our dump trucks and spread from a dump and then for the time being and then we'll see what makes most sense in the future whether to uh, um, you know replace a trailer or do this from, you know some truck phase we'll work that out this summer. But, or this this winter time as we move forward. Let's see. Um, on general general work, there is some general grading work going on right now. Still, it's mainly work fixing washes and problem areas at this point because focus is shifting to uh, it, you know to, into snow removal, and our window for doing this kind of work is evaporating. It gets hard to get these these roads compacted in time for the weather that's coming so we can do more damage if we over overgrade those at this point. So uh, they are focusing on 
uh, I believe collar Thursday. I think the plan is to do clean out all the, the collar hill culverts. I believe. I think that's the title. You already did it. Oh, good. Okay. I know one culvert was done. We had a public request on a drive culvert that was had. Yeah. Okay. Tyler told me they were doing everything up. Are all the rest on? Yeah. On, but anyway, so I, maybe I misinterpreted that. Let me see. Yeah, I, I told him about that wash. That was that hill. We had quite a gully going up there, and that rain didn't help us. When so they, yeah, I told them, and they jumped right out there because they were also working on Sparrow and I think Wheeler too. The, or that's that's on the agenda this week. You know, they're trying to get those washes under control before before snow hits. So that's good. I'm glad that was. I wasn't sure they'd be able to squeeze that one in right off the top. I'm glad that happened today. Uh, let's see. <coughs> you know, to call her replacement. <coughs> yeah, the Moscow Woods, we, as I said, they stabilized that drain the best they can for the short term. We're working on, I got estimate from, uh, from DeWolf Engineering. We're trying to see if we, if we're able to sole source a design the design and bid document, bid process, contracting, just sole source it with them because we're under a very short window. We really need to do the temporary repair to that abutment to stabilize that for three years or so until we can actually replace it. That's a full replacement on that structure. It's hopefully going to be a box culvert. It will probably be, if it's a box culvert, we're, it's hard to guess right now because of inflationary costs. Three or four years ago, that would have been three hundred thousand. It's going to be at least six hundred, seven hundred thousand now, maybe, you know, possibly more. That doesn't include the engineering, so we're probably, yeah, we're talking the better part of a million dollars probably to fix that. But the main thing is the abutment itself is is undermined on that structure, so it's actually down in the stream bed, and that's it's not just what's failing above. You know, so we have to, we've got to, that's a complete construction. And anyway, we can't waste time on that. We've got to move. That's why I want to, I'm trying to get, right now in this environment, there's a lot of air, uh, ARPA money out there. And so it's hard, you know, we, our temporary repair is probably at around $100,000. We've got an $80,000 structures grant through the state to do the temporary repair. But getting a contractor to bid on that small a job right now might be a challenge, so we need to move this fast. We all we'll have to do permitting and everything else, so I, I don't want to get caught late in the spring uh, having this out to bid. I'd like, you know, I'd really like to get it out as soon as possible. Rick, can I ask you a question about yeah. that? <clears throat> so there's, you've given us a contract for, for limited professional services. Yeah. That's not agenda. Do you want to? No, no, no. I, that's actually just. That is just for your, we, we, it's not agenda. I just gave that to you guys for, it's for your reference. It's going to be future agendas. Soon. Yeah, yeah. I need to first find out because the, we do, we are using a structures grant and I have to make sure that it's okay that we can sole source. We can do that by our, by our town policies, but I have to make sure that meets state procurement uh, guidelines. It, it, I mean, it's meaning, clearly, meaning it doesn't have to go out to bid. Yeah. Meaning it doesn't have to go out yeah, to we, bid. We We're in disaster it. mode, and it's. I think it clearly. Well, I just have to make sure because I don't want to. Right. I want. I, the, I want. I've talked to Vtrans, the you know their, D, oh, their see, DTA, okay. and I'm waiting to hear back because he wasn't sure. So we have specific. Yeah, we have specific yeah. exceptions in our town policy, but right in the state. But we, we just have, have to make sure that the state does as well. Yeah. Which is there. The, um, I just want to make sure that um, we are sort of ready to transition when at 825 because okay. I think uh, let hopefully me see. Jeremy's calling in. Uh, give me one. Let me just take a quick look. Yeah, I mean, it's the the I think the last thing I'll touch on then is I, what, we've got a few things in mind for our strategic planning immediately. You know, I think we're going. I'm going to start creating a, a tracking spreadsheet for the guys. For all the roads, so that we can, we'll break, we'll list all the roads, we'll list all of the, uh, the class of the roads, two, three, four, and then we will do, you know, we'll probably just have some categories where we have general maintenance, we'll have a 
spot fix of some kind, you know, but if they go in and do a road, whenever they do road work on a road, they can just write in a date, boom, fill in a date, and then we'll know what it is roughly, and they'll put a check by the type of work it is. So we'll have an idea of how, what kind of coverage we're getting across our road system, and then we'll, it'll also give us a better idea of these problem spots, you know, where we're returning a lot, and so, and this is something we'll make very simple, so they'll be able to just do this at the end of the day, and we'll be able to, we'll be able to see how we're, you know, where our time's going across the town. And then um, also come May, you know, I want, I want to go out with them and we'll look at our seven or nine bridges that we've got and take a close look and see if we see any impending issues with any of them. Those are always expensive fix, fixes and they are time consuming to do. I don't want to run into another, another Moscow Woods structure problem like this if I can avoid it with this short a notice. And then probably too, once, and the time to do that is May when everything, all the grass and vegetation is all smashed down. We can see them. And we have to kind of get in that sweet spot where you can actually hopefully see the bottoms of the pipes because the bottom of the pipe is called an invert. And that, they, that's where a lot of the rotting happens in those structures and if that's gone you're sitting on a time bomb so we'll but we'll I'll work with them to kind of get that done our our townwide culvert inventory we have over 600 culverts in town that is due that is scheduled to be redone by the regional planning commission they hire consultants to come in and review that and it's either he thinks it's this coming summer if not it'll be the next I just got the new password. I just signed in. I just got a password from the RPC to get onto the inventory tool that I actually helped write years ago. This is the second generation of that. But we can, we'll, it, the last time this review was done was probably 2016 or so. Or, so it's been a long time. And I don't know if it's been maintained. Yeah, Dan Curry is in it. Well, I'm just, what I mean is every time an inventory, Every time, say the guys change out a culver, like culver, a culver like uh, Collar Hill, we can actually go in there, change that in the database, and so that we can keep it up to date. Once this thing is up to date, I like to make sure it stays up to date because that's a good budgeting and planning tool for us if we do it, if we use it. But more importantly, too, I think we'll work together. They know the culverts better than me or anybody else because they work around these things all the time. And I think we'll try to look at some of those 600 ourselves for problem spots that we might think, you know, that could, that we may need to be addressing. I will. I think we'll be pro as proactive as we can about that. Rick, so, Rick, yeah. Thank you. We're good. Um, yeah. I just want yeah. to. Um, thank you, Rick. Yeah. Thank yep. you so much. It's thanks to the crew. They're they've been great. Yeah. Yeah. We have, we are, is there a problem with actually dialing in? Um, well, I'm just going to call Jeremy at his okay. home. It, maybe he's waiting to hear from us. I don't know. Um, okay. Is there that sign-up sheet for people who want to? Is out there somewhere, right? We haven't got it back. No, you got it right here. No, not this one. The one, the one of. Oh, the appointed positions. Yeah, appointed positions. Um, Thanks. Oh, look at all the people that signed up to help. Denise is being facetious. <laughs> Um, well, people need to people need to think about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I am. We will. Somebody we'll will connect with Jeremy or Jeremy uh, with Jamie and get it on the website. Yeah. And we'll try to make it bigger print. Yeah. But yeah, just letting people know we do need help, and these are like nobody needs to put shape on that. Those are positions that just exist and need need support so that our town can run. Okay. Let me see if I can get Jeremy here. No service. Mm -mm. Well, you Jeremy, know, I try it here. I can dial it. Next. I thought that if I'm, if I say, that, I, I assume so. If, if I say if it's local, we can dial. But if you say you want to use Wi-Fi calling, it doesn't make any sense that. I mean, I don't know how hard this is. Can I try it on this? Well, I just want to give him the chance. You know, this is their. The town office proposal. Would you give me this number? Uh, you can try. It's 802 456 
I think Denise has said it doesn't work because it's totally local. It's maybe the local. That is a local number. <laughs> if you have service. Uh, well, the thing is, can I get on Wi-Fi? Exactly. Just a second here. Let me just see if I can get on Wi-Fi. Wi I'm on Wi-Fi and it's not. Okay, tell us to call. Okay. Yeah, I just plain old let me call. <laughs> letting you call? Uh, all right. Now, the, let me just get to the phone. Is he the number is. Can we use that phone to call out if it's local? Just tell me what it is. It, it worked for me the other day. It did, it did. All right, so. What's the phone number? 456. 8141. There we go. System if he's there. Um, if not, we'll struggle along without him. Thanks, bye. Uh, is there a number? I think we can do, can we do it? Is there a time limit on that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's quick. And, and Jeremy, when he, Jeremy sent it around to all of us, yeah. and I suggested to him that we do have some money in the reserve fund, but we also have ARPA money and we can just use all ARPA money to pay for this and leave the money in the reserve fund. So that's what the board needs to decide. Um, it's so cold in here. It is really cold. I guess I'm just going to say it out loud. I feel like it's hard to figure out the right way to build a better communication bridge when when even when there's a proposal or a request that there's not a presence at our at our meeting, I just really struggle with that. And no, I hear you. I um, I feel like I need to just say that out loud because there's all this conversation about better communication, and if we don't say out loud what's hard to process or hard for us to handle, or hard for me to handle, hard for me to I mean handle it, <laughs> handle it, but. If communication you know, works both ways. Well, communication works both ways, and mm -hmm. this is an opportunity for somebody, if, if that's a, sub, a place that communication needs to be better, this is a clear opportunity where instead it's just an email. And I, I said it earlier, and I'll, I know I'm repeating myself, but we get so much email, and it starts to be business is happening in the email. And I'm really uncomfortable with that, and with the pattern of you know, business happen, business, or even the, the business happens in the email beyond will you put this on the agenda. Not only will you put it on the agenda, but here's everything, and can you just handle it, process it without well, somebody sitting here explaining? To sort of like what happened with the Planning Commission coming, right. coming on. They were supposed to come on September 26. We were all scheduled. They were on the agenda. In the afternoon of our meeting on September 26, we got an email from the planning commission saying, oh, gee, after all, I'm not going to make it. We're not going to come to it. We're here's, not going to come. Here's the issues, and then, and then we're left holding the bag with com communication. Well, right, we had, we, Denise is right, we had an, is, an issue that we've been criticized for was actually on the agenda, 
and we got an email saying we're not, I'm not going to come, but here's all the things that I wanted to ask you. So could you just let me know? And then, well, yeah, and then we were criticized that we hadn't right. taken care of it, but we did, but they didn't show up. We so. didn't. We didn't process the issue because nobody was here. Right. So I guess I guess we can do it, but I. I just I just happen. I just hope something hasn't. I just want to say for the record, I hope something everything is okay. Something hasn't happened, okay. and that's why he's not. Yeah, calling that could it. be. Is this if what's your recommendation? I, I, well, I, I, well, it, I mean, we're, we're, we're kind of stuck because there is a deadline. So if we want to do this for the town, we have to take action on a... So the issue is the COT system... Forget is, what the deadline is. The COT system is a system that the town uses for online, or yeah, for electronic land records. Oh. And so I believe <clears throat> that the proposal is, allows us to... I'm assuming it's some expansion yeah. of what's online. It's, 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 it's going it back. back. It's going so it does the land records back to 1940, yeah. I think, yeah. rather than whatever we have okay, now. Okay, so we, we had 28,000 budgeted. We don't have no, anything budgeted. No, we had nothing budgeted. This came up. We have a reserve fund that we've been putting money into based on the warning at town meeting. It's approved by the voters. My suggestion is I think there's five thousand in there right now, I'm not positive, that we have this ARPA fund. This is a great project to use the ARPA money for. Leave the money that's in the reserve fund there, which might eliminate the need to put yeah. so much more in every year. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yes. Well, the reserve fund, is it? Is the reserve fund... It is for office stuff. Uh, it is not for the building itself. Um, it's a reserve fund for the office, so I think it could be used for either. So if it's only 5,000. There might be 15 in there. I don't really know, it doesn't, I don't really know. I would ask Jeremy that if you were here. Um, he suggested that we use the reserve fund, and I said, well, we've got this ARPA money. Right, I would, yeah, I wouldn't want to, I, I somehow imagine the town office reserve fund as being sort of an infrastructure more than function. Well, okay, I think that this is exactly the kind of thing which... Okay, right here on the last page. Historical land records, 19, mm -hmm. 20, 17 volumes, 1941 to 2012. Um, that's, that's how far back that's going. How far back? 1941. Yeah. I think this is the kind of thing that's desirable, but... Uh, not mandatory, and that is exactly the kind of thing which we might want to use one time federal funds for. Mm -hmm. there we go. Jeremy. Jeremy. Hello. Hello. Oh, yay, Jeremy. it's you. Hey, good. Thank you for calling in. That's great. Happy to do so. Thanks for stepping up. Yeah, appreciate thank that. you, Jeremy. We really appreciate because we've been sort of like, okay, we think it's for this. Go ahead. Tell us what tell us what the proposal is that is in front of so, us. Yeah, so the proposal is um, Judy did a lot of really great work um, getting uh, digital images um, loaded onto COST, which is available online and obviously um, it's going to be expanding. Uh, throughout the state. So this proposal is essentially, and I think I, I did send you the numbers um, that it would be basically, so one of the problems right now is that it's, it's challenging for most users to actually find the information because um, currently um, it is, the, we have images back to the 1940s, however, from 2011 to current are the only ones that are actually in an index. So you're essentially going between two different places um, on cost, and it's quite confusing for folks. And, um, and until you really know the system and dig in, you actually have to, because we basically have um, kind of like a Google tab style search, um, and then it's, and that's from 2011 to current. Otherwise, you basically have to go through the, the cards, which are represented. So you, it, you have to kind of like scroll through cards, 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 
um, and then you can find the image that way. This proposal would essentially uh, have two members of COP go through um, all the way back to the 40s, uh, everything that we have uh, digital images of, and essentially index those so that there will be one search tab. You'll find everything that we have an actual image for all the way back to, I think it's like book 23. So that's essentially um, the proposal. I get it totally. And I can, I I can validate what Jeremy is saying. So it, it, it's, it's, the, it's yeah, there it's now. <laughs> it's, yeah, so, so to refine what we were saying earlier, it's all there now, mm -hmm. back to 1940, whatever, but it's, it's, not, in, it's not indexed. No, it is. Correct. Well, it's indexed in the cards. It's super hard to find. I, I have yeah. finally figured it out, but I know I had to call Jeremy one time, and both of us, Jeremy, were like, huh, how does this work again? So I imagine you get a lot of those kinds of calls. Yeah, it's a lot of education, um, and I think just generally it's confusing because they're like, wait, you have an image, but I can't just find it on the search tab. So I think it would just sort of get us back to that point um, where, and of course, you know, as you know, Sharon, most researchers just want to go back 40 years. So that for a typical researcher, unless you're really doing a deep dive, that's, that's going to be, that one search tab will give you pretty much all the information that you're seeking. Uh, it'll simplify the process. Um, it will just make it more cohesive. It, it'll probably bring a little bit more revenue just because people, it'll be easier for people to find these things online. Um, and of course, even if they're online, if they don't come into the office, they're still paying uh, a dollar a page and we're getting that revenue every month. So it might expand the revenue from the town office a little bit. Uh, but it'll just make it easier um, all around for researchers, and it just seems like with this ARPA money floating around, it might be a really good use of that just to get um, to be able to do that full 40-year search with one search tab and not have to look in different parts of COP. Yep. So, Jeremy, how much did you tell us was in the reserve fund? Uh, well, it's over 15000 Okay. So and initially, I had kind of floated this idea to Denise that said, you know, we could use up that 15 um, and then just split the difference with ARPA. The one that, that, I, that I did have, um, if, if you wanted to leave the 15 alone for the time being, um, I was not able to do anything about this summer, this summer because obviously we've had a lot going on. Um, the absence of the treasurer, there's been sickness in the office, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it's, it, it might be, it, it, it's up to the board, but if that 15000 was left in the reserve fund, it might be a really good idea to use that to, to at least begin to digitize all of, and, or, and organize through NEMRIC all of the uh, cemetery records. Mm -hmm. um, that is something that's kind of a long-standing bit of a mess that I have not even begun to think about untangling. Um, but it might, it, so I guess I would say, you know, if you did want to leave that money alone, there are there other are very money. worthy projects that we could use that. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind that restoration fund is only to be used, it's a, it's a creature of statute, the legislature put it together, I don't, it's been a few years now. Uh, but essentially it's for digitizing and upgrading um, uh, archives in a digital world. And so this, you know, something like that um, would be useful. Or if the board chooses, use that $15,000 and just, you know, use whatever amount of ARPA funds to cover the remainder to, to fill that contract. Um, the other thing I can say is I did talk to Mark. The so rates are going to go up. Uh, I believe this quote is expired in a couple of weeks. He said the rates most certainly will go up 10 to 20 percent, and that um, if we were able to pull the trigger on this contract, they could begin work within two weeks. So, Jeremy, the the reserve fund money that is for just is that for anything, or does it? I can't remember now if we had it for a specific purpose. I heard, so let me translate what I heard. I heard, 
the reserve, the reserve fund is a specific fund that came from the legislature for digitizing, and so we're not talking about a reserve fund that would replace replace the four boards in the town office or but fix a have, leaky roof. But don't we have a separate town office reserve fund? Yeah. Right. Correct. That, those are two totally different things. Okay. okay. Yeah, All right. That's what I was. So there's this that's town what I office saying. reserve fund. That's money to upgrade and repair the town office. What I'm talking about is the preservation fund that okay. has over fifteen thousand dollars. That is specific to digitizing land records. Okay. Right. And that fund comes from the legislature. Well, it's correct. So, so for instance, we budgeted in last year's budget uh, about ten thousand dollars. For me to get roller sh a new roller shelf and plat map um, update. The roller shelf was delivered today, so that's going to be really good because I have run out of space to put books in, and we go through about two books a year, um, land record books. Um, that, yeah, so that that preservation fund would not. I was not um, able to use any money for that because you know storing. Uh, the actual right. physical book has is not uh, consistent with what the legislature specifically created, which was for the purpose of digitizing land records. So there's yeah, there's certain things that you can cannot use that money for. Um, and as far as the the town office fund, I, my understanding is that is more for repairs or for upgrades or for whatever future needs that the town office. Yes. And okay. I know that yep. there's been talk yeah. about doing renovations and things and, like that. Yeah, That's so why that money is okay, there. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah, that Jamie. helps. And the preservation fund, Jeremy, that came from the increased fees for accessing records, so it's, it is continuing to be fed. Am I right about that? Correct. So yeah. what, it, what that uh, piece of legislation did was allow town clerks, the fees did go up slightly, um, and it allowed town clerks to take um, a certain portion out of every recording fee, so it was $4 out of every $15, so $15 a page to record. Uh, uh, I can, and you, you don't have to, it's, it, it's elective. Some town clerks don't take that money out, but it's been the practice for Judy, and I have done the same thing that we have taken $4 out of every $15 that's recorded to put aside in that fund for the purposes of digi digitizing further uh, the land records and trying to, you know, with the hopes of, A, all making them more accessible for people, but also, you know, the notion around having lots and lots and lots of people in the, in the, in the vault at one time is, you know, less of a, a priority with COVID and flu and RSV and all these different things. So it just makes it easier for online researchers to not necessarily have to come in to, um, to, to search records in person, um, at least be able to do much of their research before they show up. I mean, yeah. that's what I've really found is that people can that do sense. quite a lot of research and then they're sort of getting the odds and ends, looking through the zoning files, looking through some of the other things to kind of get the full picture that they're seeking. Right. Thank you, Jeremy. Are so you ready for a I just want to I just want to crystallize one point. If we don't use ARPA funds for this and we save them for something else, over time the preservation fund that Jeremy's talking about does grow. Right. So eventually there would be enough in that to do that's, this and all the other things. That's one of my but, one of my concerns is I'm, but, I'm just not sure I want to use. I want to do the full $28,000. Well, I don't what, want to use the fund because the fund is dedicated for this specific purpose. Right. The ARPA money we can use for anything. Well, right. And so, True. so yeah. So, so but I like the idea of using some of it. So, like, I would support splitting it or $15,000 coming from ARPA and or $20,000 coming from ARPA and $8,000 from this fund. In other words, I'm, I'm just reluctant to so use Sir, you want to make a motion? Okay. I move that we... Um, commit. We commit $8,510 of this, first of all, that we approve the contract. And authorize and Jeremy. Authorize to Jeremy to enter into it. And that in terms of the funding, that 20000 of it come from the ARPA money and $8,510 of it come from the historic 
What's no, it called? from the preservation fund. The preservation fund. From, coming from recording fees. Coming from recording fees. Yeah. I will second that. Okay. okay. Any other questions, comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 I want to ask if we can, Denise, you're the keeper of ARPA. Can you circulate and maybe we can put in the record next meeting where we are in terms yeah. of. Yeah, just Cause yeah. Because I'm going to need to do that. I'm going to need to do that for when we start talking about town meeting budgets and all that stuff. So that's on my radar. All okay. right. Jeremy, um, thank you very much. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. Okay, thank you everybody. Have a yep. good rest of your meeting and talk to you soon. All right, thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Okay, that actually was super helpful mm -hmm. to have him here. Thank you, Jeremy. Okay, Mark, you. Um, so, this is about the Nemeric reappraisal contract. The contract. We got it right here. We saw the contract before the contract. There were two open, the board had two concerns. One was there was no maximum in the con it's a mm -hmm. no maximum contract in the contract, mm -hmm. and the second was, well, would it qualify under the town purchasing policy as a sole source uh, contract? And so uh, Jan and I uh, came up with a new revised contract, which you have, which has in it um, a limit of one hundred and twenty. Six thousand six hundred twenty-five thousand six hundred and twenty-five dollars. One two five six two five. Wait, one hundred and twenty-five thousand six hundred and twenty-five dollars. And in addition, an hourly rate not to exceed six thousand dollars for any BCA and grievance hearings. Um, it's that kind of the contract as we drafted was circulated to Ed Clodfelder, who provides his services via NEMRIC, and he agreed to those terms. Um, that amount is comfortable in that it assumes an increase in the number of parcels that we have, and it also assumes, on the other hand, it's beneficial to us because the 125 per parcel charge it's conceivable that by the time this happens, it could be more than that, but they're, they're committing to this. In terms of sole source, I reviewed the town purchasing policy, and I set forth two exemptions, which I think really are opposite here, which is that there's really, right now, there are very few, if any, reappraisers who have not been snapped up by other towns, and Ed knows workforce, and he he's knows done, He's done this before. And he's done it before. And it, there's also an exception for professional services characterized by a high degree of professional judgment and discretion, including financial services. And so I think this clearly falls within the exception we could do it. So it's my recommendation to the board and it is one that's seconded by Jan uh, Olson, that's O-H-L-S-S-O-N, as Blister, that we move forward with this contract and approve it today so that it can be sent for signature to Ed Clark. Is that a motion? Uh, I move that we approve this contract, the reappraisal agreement contract. The sole source, yeah. With uh, sole, via sole source, with Ed Clodfelder of the memory. I'll second that. Yeah. Questions, comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, so I'm gonna, here's the signature page. Great. I actually do have a question of, of which budget is this gonna come out of? Uh, there is a fund, a separate fund, right. have, which okay. is state money. The, it doesn't have quite that amount in it yet, but it, I think, will by 2024 when this happens. Okay. And if it doesn't, we'll have to supplement it. But I think there's yeah, over Yeah, there is, there is a, right, there's a state fund that is um, overseen by the tax department, right? Yeah. Okay. And it can only be used for that purpose. Okay, thank you. Um, is that something we all yep. sign? Okay. Um, the next item is approving and signing revised municipal policies. Um, oh, yeah. And this is the one it's, that, is this the VCDP one? 
Yeah, it is. Yes, it's a community development program. I brought it um, and I printed it. Um, before we start anything on that, I'm going to recuse myself from this matter. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Hey, and, but then do we, do Well, we this, is, this is where I was heading, um, <laughs> is that when you both recuse yourself, it's only me and Rick, because John's not here. But the, is, it, is, is that a quorum of this no. meeting? No, no, it's it not even. Be, it has to be a quorum of the board, of the board and can. plus a quorum okay, is, we'll is, is a majority plus one, and we don't have that either. Okay. So I think we have to defer this to the yeah. next meeting. Okay. Well, okay. Do we have a problem time? Yeah. yeah. Well, hang on. We have um, we have a. Are we warning a special meeting? TH7 on Thursday. TH7 on Thursday. We don't have to warn that, I don't think. No, we haven't warned it because it's merely deliberation. It's, it's deliberation. But, but we, we, would, would, but we, we would, would need to do it on, for the Saturday meeting. That's right. So can we just postpone it to Saturday? Will John be there? If not in person, he said he'd be on by phone. Okay. Okay, that that's counts. That's fine, because you and I are. <coughs> okay. Okay. Oh, right. okay, so we'll. Jeff's not going to be happy, but it's the way it is. Okay. Yeah. okay. Up next. Um, oh, Nick. FEMA grant. Yeah. Nick. Yeah. Yay. Yay. All right. Nick's frozen in place. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for your hard work. Yeah. Wow. Let's, let's try something out just to see if we can flex these muscles. Um, this is an action item. Before we even start talking, somebody say what the motion is. The motion is going to... Uh, Motion is going to be to approve the FEMA grant application for a generator at the town hall and Maple Corner Community Center, which we forgot to put on here. But it's 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 to purchase two generators using FEMA funds with a 50% match from the town. Um, and does that include and and installation, right? Yes. Uh, and, one way of shortening that is to say to approve the emergency management performance grant application by the town parents. Right. For two generators. Oh, there's a list that I need to tell you what it's okay. Yeah, there's a list of stuff. Yeah. But the other piece would be to use ARPA funds to meet the town's 50% match. Okay. So this is, this is I think, I said this before, but I think David and or Reed's suggestion that we get super clear about our motions is an opportunity for all of us and the people who are bringing things to us because well, you know, we wouldn't if if Nick wasn't here to bring it to discuss it. It would have been hard to well, come we up try. with the motion. No, tried. but that's what I'm saying. Is like if I could have this this is this yeah, is right. something, but not everybody can. We'll just work on it. Well, right. Yeah. That's something we have to work on is mm -hmm. recognizing. Oh, Nick, Nick, what's going to be the here. motion? Right. This Nick, person might need us to help come up with the motion. Right. That's but what I'm thinking. I do think it is a good idea because it will it will hone us all in mm -hmm. right away on where are we headed yeah. here. Anyway, I just wanted to raise that because okay. it was a good point. Yeah. Well, Go I'll start there. This is about uh, uh, a proposal for the town to provide a 50% match for this grant uh, from coming from the Vermont Department of Public Safety. Uh, and the purpose of the grant is to support local emergency and emergency operations center improvement projects. And Lisa, I'm going to send you an email tomorrow with all the details. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is, uh, there are, there's a list of things that qualify for the grant. And here I'm going to read off what they are, the ones that we're proposing. By the way, this is Denise and Rick have been tracking and participating in this, and the mm -hmm. people at Betty Copeland. Mm -hmm. uh, a generator, 24 kilowatt, for the for this building, um, so this is auxiliary emergency backup power. Uh, so I'll just, there's two sites, but to just to talk about this site, um, a radio base station, because the, the rationale is I'm going to move the emergency operations center away from the town office, which is small, and if there were an actual disaster and, we, and the emergency operation team was trying to function, they would be tri underfoot and tripping over at the uh, municipal officials and competing for the communications gear and stuff. So if I just come down here where we can spread out and um, have the backup power, have a um, cellular booster on the building so that you wouldn't have problems with yourself when you get three or four bars, um, and to have a 
radio base station, uh, it's the same one, uh, the type that's used at the town office, so that we can be connected here to the town garage, to uh, the fire department, to Vermont Emergency Management, and so forth. Um, and the last piece there to it is a uh, uh, an auto automated external defibrillator, the AED device. Uh, like they have over to school. Mm -hmm. So those are the four pieces for here uh, at Town Hall. And the other component of this is to, uh, again, the primary purpose, move the emergency operations center, secondary purpose. Um, if we have those things, this would be a suitable location for um, emergency shelter, warning center. Uh, American Red Cross representatives came last week. They toured this building toward the um, Maple Corner Community Center and the school and said, great, you can do that if you had the backup power. You could use this building for that purpose. Mm -hmm. um, over at the Maple Corner before Community you, Center. Before you go to Maple Corner, do we need a cell repeater if we're going to have fiber here? Uh, it's it's a different, uh, it's different in that this is uh, boosts the signal coming off cell towers. Yeah, okay. And, and All right. fiber is for, 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 uh, so for part of the okay. rationals have redundant systems. So <coughs> if the cell towers go down, you have cable. If the cable goes down, you have cell. Right. Okay. And that's and that's about five hundred bucks. So that's not a big. Okay. Yeah. 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 What's the total cost? Well, he's going to get to that when oh. he tells us about Maple Corner. I'll okay. just do Maple Corner. Um, oh, they're they're just asking for. They do not need the, the radio base station. They do not need the. Um, cell phone signal booster, uh, but for a generator and for um, also for the AED device. Um, we had a contractor, two contractors come in uh, who sell generators and look at this and gave us quotes. Um, the total cost for all of those things, um, as it's coming out now, is about 25,464, so the 50% match from the town would be 16,330. Wait a minute. Twenty. $25,000 for both locations. Yeah. So right. it should be about twelve five, right? Uh, half, twelve five. Half. Twelve five. For half. Half. Five thousand for all the gear that I just listed. Right. Yes. yes. And fifty percent of that would be the match. Twenty five. But well, that would be like. That would be twelve. Like twelve. Twelve five, right? Oh, I'm reading the wrong number. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. okay. Yeah. That, that, yeah. So I'm just, oh, right. man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So is, um, what is the, in their bid, what was their, and these are, uh, by the way, propane generators? I just gave you the wrong numbers. So I scratched this out just okay. before coming over here. Um, the total number is 32,000. So ah, okay. okay, that's big. And so okay. half of it so then is, is 16. 16. What is the price for the generators? The generators are, um, Twelve thousand seven thirty-two for a that's installed for twenty-four kilowatt. And are they? Does that include propane? Are they propane? They are, are propane, they? and um, both places have a propane tank. Uh, a tank could be added, and uh, Bill Powell's been talking with Gillespie about the cost. Well, probably somewhere around five hundred dollars to do that. Right. But we already have propane here and at Maple Park. So you just have to tie it, is that how it works? You just have to hook up to it? Tie it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it. let me test this out. The motion would be for the select board to authorize moving forward on this four-piece project, um, applying the total cost of which is approximately $32,000, 50% match, which would come from FEMA grant, and the town's 50% is match is 16,000, which could come from ARPA, but doesn't have to, obviously. Right, right, right. if we had other money, we could do it. Okay, so I think it just needs to be that the, the town would approve the 50% town match, and then we can figure out. Right. Is the, are we, <clears throat> is this our final action? In other words, we're approving a contract or do you have to prepare the contract and bring it back to us? Uh, the 
application deadline is tomorrow at 3 p.m. Be, and and, and I know I know it's like we don't like these kind of things, like, yeah, yeah, but right. we didn't yeah. even find out about this until a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so are we authorizing yeah. Nick as emergency director to to apply? Do you need our applicate our authorization, or is it for you? Is it sort of oh. within your scope already? Well, Nick no, could sign it's for right? you to sign this piece of paper. Um, you as the municipal authority and you as the fiscal agent tonight. Or okay. tomorrow morning. Yeah, right. No, no, no. So, so what you want is a motion Just authorizing, the no, authorizing the board, no. authorizing the, the, the filing of. Right, and we're working with VLCT to get the FEMA grant application. You have to have us show that you have proof of insurance. Yes. So we're working with VLCT to get that. Um, yeah, and by the way, FEMA is not invoked anywhere in any of these materials, I think it'd be more um, appropriate to say the source is the Vermont Emergency Management VM. Department yeah. of Public Safety. Okay, can you read that? Maybe Lisa yeah. want to read it back? Um, the, the grant grantor is the Vermont Emergency Management Department of Public Safety. Okay, so we are we approving the filing of the grant application. Right. And, and agreeing to the match. Right. Yeah. And the 50% match. Down okay. Okay. So. Well, we should say it out loud. Yeah. So, so Denise as fiscal agent, because we don't have somebody officially in the position of treasurer, so we need to say out loud. It doesn't mean that Denise is our treasurer, and means right. that for uh -huh. purposes of this application, she's in the shoes of. Did somebody make a motion? Well, Mark did. Okay. Um, Lisa, did you get the motion? So, so he said moving forward on the project, but, but, but what you're saying is no. So we're approving. Forward. I move that we approve the, the filing of, the of a grant. Yeah, yeah our application. Of a grant, an application to um, to the Vermont Emergency Management Department of Public Safety for. Um, for the emergency management performance grant. Grant. And that do we want to state and, and that, that we also agree to the local match of 50% of the cost. Source all, of which is to be determined. Right. All, all related to the installation of backup generators and related facilities at Town Hall and the yeah, Maple Corner Community Center. All right, that's second. a motion, man. So there's yes, no second. money amounts, just the 50%. Right, that's right, right. I'll second that. Any other questions for Nick? No. Okay. All in favor? Great job. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Nick. Good quick turnaround. Oh, that was fast. I know, it's mind boggling, isn't it? Sign it, man. Okay. Are we yeah. going to sign it? Do we have to sign this? I'm just sharing. Signing um, it. Cool. I have a question for you, uh, Mark. You mentioned uh, the town's purchasing policy. Yes. This brand requires a, a copy of their crime, uh, the town's procurement standards. That yes, that's the purchasing policy. Yeah, it's, 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 it's right online, Nick. I can send you the link. Oh, tomorrow. thank you. I'm yeah, and under you. ordinances and policies, there's a um, um, purchasing policy. Yep. Do you have to also include your blood type? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Actually, this one. Actually, this grant thing wasn't yeah. that bad. Yeah. Okay. So my my question is, we've signed this, okay. and I'm gonna want. Do you want? Do you need the hard copy signed? And if you do, would you scan? Would you scan it and email it to me yes. so we can keep track of all this stuff? Because I'm gonna have to create. So that, that the hard copy. Yeah. yeah. I've already created a digital folder for this stuff. Um, but we're going to want to have to, you know, keep hard copies for the auditors. And let me see if there's anything that I haven't said to you. And I'll be home tomorrow morning so that we can make sure that we get what we need from VLCT. Okay. Um, there's one other thing is that I think I'm, uh, I need to include in the application a letter of support, a letter of support from the select board. So I'm going to draft that for you and send it to you. Um, is that? Or is that something you need tonight? In that case, I'd also make a motion authorizing 
Rick mm -hmm. and I have been working on it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Is that what I... If you want to draft a letter. Yeah, authorizing uh, Rick, and, Rick, Rick and Denise to sign a letter of support for the grant. Right. Well, how are you going to sign it? Oh, just one. Just, I think just one. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Can you? Then, then okay. Rick. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Rick, just authorizing Rick. No. No, Denise. Just Denise. Rick, Rick's going to be on the road tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Denise. Doing his job that he gets paid <laughs> <Imagine> for. <that. laughs> thank you, Nick. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Well done, Nick. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Question is, my, finally, my, one wait, of my goals has been for years to get a generator here. As far as I'm concerned, I think the board should express it's sense that whatever the hell else you find at the last second you need to do in order to finalize this, you have authority to do it. <laughs> oh, I have authority to do it? Yeah. Okay. Or right. get it done, you guys. I mean, because yeah. yeah. I know with grants, you keep reading and then right. you're about to stick it in the envelope and you realize, oh my something, God, something I can't more, believe it. Well, these two have really been very helpful. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. doing this. Um, Yay, we did it. Okay. Thanks a lot, Nick. Thanks for being here tonight, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Thanks for coming and yeah. for your support. Interesting. Your, your patience and your integrity are coming through. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Did you get that for the minutes, Lisa? What he just said? Yeah. Patience and integrity? Yeah. Uh, I wanted, so moving on to, Where are um, you at now? we're at our 9 o'clock item, and it's only 10, 11 after 9. So That's not bad. Congratulations, Madam Chair. Well, okay. no, it's fine. It's we're good. Okay. Um, I want to just mention, and Lisa, this also, I just want some, please, some quick, um, just, you know, something in the minutes on this. So there's been, over the past couple of weeks, um, I was copied on this whole email conversation among various other folks around the revised tax bill. So person withdrew from the current use and that results in a higher tax bill and a revised tax bill. And then that throws all the timelines off. Oh, taxes are due tomorrow, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Shoot. Better get your check right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just like, oh, I'm about to say grace period. I was like, oh, wait a minute. Um, we do have that. I meant to drop it off on my way and I forgot. Okay, so back to the point. So there was this whole email conversation that I was copied on and I couldn't figure out why I was copied on, but it, it became clear that it was um, because it wasn't clear whether the 30 days to submit payment applies to a revised bill, which is going to extend that deadline past tomorrow, and every year the voters have approved the seven-day grace period. So, does that apply to a, a a revised bill? At one point, and this is not the end. I counted; there were 12 emails on this question, um, and clearly, no, you know, no. So, I said, Sandra at one point weighed in and said, the statute says. 30 days. So that takes that question off. Last task, the last bill, the person gets 30 days. We can't compel payment earlier. So that question was answered statutorily. And then there's the question of whether the grace period applies. And I said, if that's been our practice in the past, apply it. Um, so this ties to a couple of things. One is my point earlier, the business starts to happen in email. And I am incredibly uncomfortable with that. I was incredibly uncomfortable being put in the point, the position that somehow the select board is being looked at to weigh in on something that seemed to me like a um, ask forgiveness, not permission kind of, you know, can't we get our business done and then check in with each other about whether that was the right call. Um, but anyway, so that allowed it to move forward. And I said, that's when our press practice and absolutely just apply the seven day grace period. And that actually led to some other conversation in the email, which I won't get into right now. But um, I am not a fan of that kind of business happening in, in no, email. Sure. You're right. And I'm also not a fan of, of, you know, if it's going to be an issue and it's always going to be a question, then we should lock it down in a policy. Right. Right. So I'm just, I'm doing all those things. I'm saying to you guys, 
I said, if that's past practice, let's just do it to, so everybody can move on. And I'm now alerting you that I did that um, without your authorization. And, and secondly, putting out there that we should revise our delinquent tax. I was just going to say, should we just revise yeah, our should. delinquent tax policy? Right. And then it's never, and then it's not an issue. That's my point, is, is let's, let's revise our delinquent tax policy. And, and this just goes on the list to do. To do. Um, down at the, the bottom where we've got some policy things that we need to do. Mm -hmm. But at least we're saying that out loud now, and, and that is now our, our practice. So if there, even before we document it in policy, if that comes up again, I would hope that we'll embrace that as our practice. But it won't well, get it's in our minutes, too, so that helps. Is, exactly, it's in our minutes. So um, when we get around to revising our, reviewing and updating our delinquent tax policy, we should incorporate that any grace period the taxes period. aren't delinquent until any grace period has run, and grace periods apply. I don't know. We'd have to finesse the language, but right. anyway, I want to say all that to you guys. So it's seven days. It's yeah, yeah. It's just seven a, days from the date that the payment was due, right? Which is not exactly how it's voted at town mm -hmm. meeting, no. which is what created the whole conundrum to begin with. Right, and it's never been an issue before, and it was only an issue one, right? So, yeah. and yet, all right. Thanks, Nick. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so I put some language here, more or less along, or in my notes. I don't have of. But that. now it'll be in the minutes. So it'll we'll be in the that. Yeah. yeah. Um, future agenda items. Um, we really need to meet. We need well because this becomes a budget item. We've been carrying this, but invite the um, Woodbury and East Montpelier to discuss. Yeah, I was going to see when, because that's you know that might be something that we would need to put on. Morning. Right. You need to what? Warn. Well, we talked when we went to us. Uh, I think we already talked about this, but I'll just recap quickly. We went to an East Montpelier Fire Department meeting, mm -hmm. and they brought up recruitment issues, as is everybody else having volunteers. Right. And they said, would the towns consider some kind of an exemption, like we do for veterans? It's like a certain dollar amount or percentage to entice and incentivize people to belong to the fire department and there would be strict guidelines about an exemption you know, from a certain amount of exemption from their property tax and they would have strict guidelines about who would qualify it can't just be you come to one fire or one meeting a year and you qualify there there would be specific guidelines requirements you know for training for attendance all these things so i think and I talked to, yeah, I talked to both fire departments, and they really are happy that we are willing to initiate this. Mm -hmm. um, it might make sense to just talk to the fire departments first, and then we'll be, we will be having a budget meeting with East Montpelier Fire Department and East Montpelier Select Board. At the beginning of December, we could ask to have this as an agenda item to talk about and invite Woodbury. So I'm going to refine that idea and suggest that we actually proactively reach out to Larry and Chance, right? Everybody? Chance, yeah. Yeah, and say, you know, we are we are open to. I think I, I think I am already. But ask, have you actually asked them to, we haven't seen a proposal. No. Ask them to present a written, formal written proposal so yeah. that we, so we don't, uh, what we were saying earlier, so we so don't. save time. So that we don't yeah. like create the proposal here. Okay. With as much detail as possible. Do you want to do that, Denise? Yeah. Sure. I've already talked to them about it, so. I can follow up if you want, so it's a different, coming from a different email, different person. I'll do that. Well, I guess we'll both be doing it. Um, for, yeah, I, don't want to, I guess the biggest thing is, is, you know, do we want them to come on the 28th, I guess it is, right? We could have them on the 12th, but we let them know that it's, that we want, we would invite them to submit a formal proposal. We can have them come on the 28th, you mean? No, well, the 12th, because that gives them more time. And oh, the 12th of December. Yep, and that takes something off. Chance and Larry. Um, Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I've already talked to 
them about it. Um, mentioned it. Talked to what's his name, Alex. Somebody whose name I can't say. Oh, Alec uh, Babuski. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I don't know that we historic background. We're gonna do that next time. House Rhodes. Yes. Okay. I talked to Stephanie. Um, I don't really think at this point there's anything to go in executive session for tonight. I I was thinking there wasn't, and I was still well, starting to go down through that. I, I would like to bring up when. Do we have any idea which of these, when we are going to put on our agenda the warning for the Curtis Pond Dam? Well, we have to allow, I sent, I talked to Bob Fletcher, and he needs more time to research it. He says that he thinks he's going to research it, find a way to make it happen, and, and help write the warning, but he needs more time to research it. And, I mean, it isn't like we have to have the warned item tonight. No. When, when is the last time we can have the warned item? Okay, I'd have to go back and look at the paper that Barbara sent all of us, giving us the deadlines. Okay, well, I'll talk to you about it. Yeah. I don't think... I think he's got to do it within, like, at the next meeting or the, or the next, because we've got to have the warned item. So, I okay, just let... Here's it... the thing, is the alternative to him is something that's going to take two or three weeks to make happen. So, I feel like I've got to act in the next five days, I got to pick up the phone and call someone, call. make an appointment. Call someone? Bond counsel. In other words, if I'm going, just the act of finding bond counsel. So, so I think out. probably we do need to go into executive session. I okay. do want to make sure that we have time to, we have to, I'm going to insist that we go back to what is going to be on our next agenda, because we are getting to a place where okay. there's a lot yeah, of sure. pieces. Yeah, okay. Um, we have some commission and committee reappointments we can do next time, yes, Denise? Yes. But we can well, do those in consent. We can do those in consent, um, if, especially if we can find some people to fill some of the ones that we put out there tonight, HPC, Conservation Commission. But we have some that we can re renew. Yes, yes. So so if, if nothing else, we can renew. And, and the renewal ones, I feel... I feel perfectly comfortable doing renewal ones in consent agenda. I think, yeah. I think new appointments we should meet with. Yeah. That's I think we should get Kellogg Hubbard Library done. You know, we've been next saying meeting. it next meeting, next meeting, next meeting. Let's just get it done. Okay. Um, Rick, traffic control ordinance is one also we keep moving forward. Or is that something you feel like you want to put a... No, you're Time busy. Lana, not right now. Yeah, yeah okay, this is, so I'm going to just drop this right down to um, future agenda yeah, items and right. take it off from dates. Yeah, let's not put a date by it. Okay, but yeah, do know that there's people who, as soon as we drop that out, I mean, it's people are paying attention and watching. Yeah, I get it. Well, yeah, I, I, know I can, I, know well, I just want to make sure we can speed, dedicate the Speed time. signs, we, I didn't hear that mentioned, but you... I think you told me when we were speaking the other day that you actually been around town looking at where to, with the road crew looking at yeah, where Yeah, yeah, we picked, I mentioned it tonight. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, we picked, yeah. we, eastbound we, and westbound. Can we, so can, we take, can we take this off? So yeah, is that yeah. moving we're, forward? We're gonna, yeah, as soon as, it all depends right now on whether they get out and dig in the bases before ground freezes, so they're going to, Okay. We've selected three locations, one on Wait, Lightning Ridge, two on... And you've got it in your rolling report, so we'll... Yep, it's okay. A, um, traffic, use of ARPA funds for traffic calming road study. That may end up being something that we do... I think we might want to put that under just future agenda items. And we may want to see if we can hire somebody to do that. Well, of course we would hire somebody. Right. It's just, it's more like that in-between piece. Who's going to manage that whole thing? Right. So I think we just move that to. It's we not going to happen until next summer. Anyways. Until we have a DPW. Right. Right. It would be a. Okay. Um, and the annual vast trail request can be next time. Right. Because okay. that'll take five minutes. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm going to speak with Jeremy uh, about. I did the December twelfth item. Flowed out of that. And I December will speak, 12th or November 28th? You no, know, the December 12th thing that I have here. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to talk to him about and encourage him to come and talk to us about that item. Okay, so going back to... Um, you think we need to go to executive session? 
I think we should go into yeah, a second session. You have session. to invite me to join you. And we'll invite you to join us. So is, will somebody... I mean, you don't have to, but you can't. I just can't slip into these. Exactly. No, you can't. Yeah. No. So we're going into... Are you making um, a motion? I think I'm going to make a motion. We're going into executive session to discuss a Curtis Pond related contractual item. And is that accurate? Mm -hmm. um, under, I don't know what this real is. estate. I don't know the number. Yeah, it's real a estate. real estate and a real estate contractual okay. item. What time is it? Um, 9, 20, 20, 20, 25. We'll, we'll put the specific reference, statutory reference in the, in the minutes. minutes. It's one. I know. It's one three one three A. One of the sub numbers. Yes. I have that stuff here, but we oh, we have to make a finding first. Right, where premature public knowledge. Okay, I would like a motion that premature public knowledge of of a contractual item would disadvantage the town's negotiations related to real estate. Okay, second. No, that's what I'm asking. For oh, motion. Um, okay. Motion made. Second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And I would invite Mark Mahali. And now, point, we made the finding, and now we, I'll go back to the original motion of, we're going into executive discussion to discuss a real estate contractual related issue under 1313A something, A1 something. Um, is there a motion? So moved. It's under, it's 313A1A. Yeah, okay. Capital A, not little a. All in favor, no, is there a second? I need a second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. A one A. A one A. Yeah. Two A's. Okay. Three one A. Three one three little A. Not the Mark. Yeah, Mark is recusing himself. 